Hi guys, and uh, welcome back to Scale. Can you then? Hi. Hi. Hi, guy. Welcome. Um, sit. Sit. No. No. Oh, goodness. You know, look over there. Oh. Hi guys, welcome back to Scale Mode. Uh, um, in uh, in this in this video, we're um, doing the Suzuki stuff. <laughs> Part four of the Suzuki. Right, scoops. Sit. I'm I'm trying to do an intro. So welcome back to Scale Mortar. Um, yeah, so we crack on with part four of our Suzuki today. Um, <clears throat> this one we're going to be focusing mainly on the exhausts. Um, exhausts are my favourite part of the build. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I put a lot of work into these exhausts. I tried something new. Um, turned out okay. There's a lot of filling and sanding involved. Um, but yeah, I cut most of that out um, because that's not something you want to watch. Fill, sand, prime, fill, sand, prime, prime, sand, fill, fill, sand, 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 prime, sand a bit more, fill, sand, prime. Yeah, that's not that's not what you guys want. So unless that's what you want, let me know. Um, let me know in the comments down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Calm down now. Chill out. Try and do an intro. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, yeah, uh, we crack on with the exhausts and a bit of uh, the radiator as well. Uh, not much went on with the radiator. It was pretty much as the instructions call out for, so I didn't go into much detail with that. But I think Scooby's getting bored, so let's just crack on. Okay, so not too much going on in this video. The vast majority of it is going to be working on these exhausts um, because there was a bit of PE and um, it didn't fit excellently. And um, I tried out a couple of things with paint. Uh, I did miss one of the steps. I didn't film it for some reason because I'm a bit of an idiot. But I'll uh, I'll just talk you through what I done later on. But first things first, we came to fitting everything together. Uh, seam lines on on uh, on the exhaust they were um they were sanded off previously the ejector pin marks are pretty good actually they they're kind of on the inside so not uh, not much of an issue um so what we're doing is using our tamiya extra thin popping our parts together uh, putting a little dab between the parts first popping them together and then running a little bit along the seams and giving it a, a squeeze to try and get some of that uh, molten plastic out to, so we have less filling to do later on. Um, it can be a little bit, uh, um, a little bit fiddly. Um, these exhausts sometimes where the where they glue together um, to to fill and sand later on, but. Uh, these weren't too bad, and any of the parts really which needed uh, filling, filling and sanding. Uh, just make sure when you're handling uh, stuff that you're gluing this much, you uh, wipe your fingers together every now and again, try and get rid of any of that excess glue, or give it a rub on your trousers or anything. Just make sure there's no glue on your fingers, which you can leave fingerprints on the part with. Um, and once that's dry, we came in with our UMP sander and we're just trying to knock down any of those seam lines and try and get rid of any of those kind of um, those gaps. So the way we squeezed the parts together with the glue in should have made a bit of molten plastic come out and that's kind of free filler. Um, doesn't always work perfectly um, and you may end up having to do a little bit more filling. But that's uh, that's fine. Um, one thing I did notice is on these exhausts, the uh, further up towards the top, the um, the weld seams are raised. Um, now, looking at reference photos of the actual bike, um, they aren't raised. I'm not sure what process was used to weld them. Um, 
However, they, they are pretty, pretty flush. Um, being titanium, I'm assuming they're going to be some sort of TIG welding or, or maybe furnace welded. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I just got rid of them. Um, yeah, I just uh, got rid of what I could. And now I'm just getting rid of the remainder of the, uh, the sprue gates. Um, yeah, I, I sanded off the... Uh, the well it seems because they just they did they didn't seem real to me they protruded quite a bit they, they they're good for reference i suppose if later on you're gonna mask them off and do some some painting around the outside uh with your airbrush um but i opted for a different method for some of the staining which you'll see later on once we've sanded away we're coming in with our ump buffer first the blue side then the white side um just to bring that plastic back up to shiny, shiny plastic. If you are removing uh, seam lines and stuff with your knife like this, just be a little bit more careful than I probably am, because it is quite easy to misshape the part or, um, or cut off a bit too much or leave some deep, deep scratches. Just go to town on it with that buffer. Okay, next up, these two little annoying fiddly little parts come with the fork set. And they glue onto the end, um, so you can glue the PE onto the end. Um, don't just cut them off and then try and add them. Just look at the numbers, because that's so much easier. I spent about 5-10 minutes before this working out which bit went where. Um, but yeah, we're just going to hold these on, dab a little glue on, the glue should start to hold it straight away uh, the time you're extra thin then we're just going to pop uh, a bit more glue around the seam on the inside because it doesn't really matter what the inside looks like, it's going to be hard to see the inside then we're going to give them a nice push flush to try and get a bit of that uh, molten plastic to come out because these parts on the actual pipes um, if you're looking at photos, they can look like a separate piece. They are a separate piece, but they are welded flush. So I didn't want any seams or any gaps. So after sticking these on, uh, just be careful. Line them up first. Make sure they go where they need to go. Clean up your parts first. There's some uh, extra bits of sprue on the inside, I'm guessing, just to help keep their shape once they're being moulded. But they need to be snipped off and then uh, clean it up with a craft knife and a bit of um, a small piece of sandpaper. Or you can use the UMP customizable sanders, um, which are really, really good um, for little fiddly jobs like this. Yep. <clears throat> and, then, and then get everything stuck on and then make sure everything's lined up the uh, good thing with the time you're extra thin is this stuff doesn't dry instantly so you do have a bit of wiggle room and you can kind of get it in place and then fine tune it once it's on okay next up PE um, so these PE exhaust meshes, again, I would suggest just looking at the parts rather than just cut them off. Um, with PE, I like to use a hard surface to cut, um, just because you can, uh, the sprue, the, sorry, the, the fret gates can bend quite easily and bend your part. Um, using my handy dandy swanky rotary tool with a stone bit on just to clean up the pieces of PE. Worked quite well for these because it's quite a thick piece of photo etch. Thinner pieces, I might be a little bit more hesitant to use it on. Um, or maybe use uh, a flat nose pliers to hold the part just to... Uh, sorry, a flat nose pliers, a flat pliers to hold the part just so it's nice and, and flat and secure while doing this. Um, but yeah, this worked wonders a million times better than a diamond file. Or uh, actually, to be honest, I've used a diamond file once. I normally just use my standard Tamiya basic files and it takes me about three quarters of an hour to get rid of a gate. But, uh, but yeah, that rotary tool is great for that. Make sure you've got some snacks handy. You can see the cookies in the background because this part was a little bit infuriating because I spent, again, about 15-20 minutes trying to line everything up. Um, 
quick easy way to get the bend snap uh, snip the um, the kit parts off and then just bend the PE around the kit parts and then look where they go it's a bit of a, a bit of a weird shape the, the this PE should should be kind of like domed slightly in the middle um, it was quite hard to get that effect without any kind of like doming tools or anything. I tried heating it up and I'm pressing it down with a uh, the round end of a ball peen hammer, uh, a little ball peen hammer which I have. Um, and yeah, I just melted um, other stuff. So I just settled for gluing one side on, um, as you'll see shortly. Again, this is me just trying to line everything up, and the, the PE seems a little bit big for this application, um, which was slightly, slightly annoying. Um, <clears throat> it kind of protruded on the back end, so it left a kind of lip, uh, which obviously on the actual exhaust, there is no lip. Um, so what I've done is I've got my pin vise uh, to hold my exhaust in, uh, and in the end I didn't even use that um, so what we we're gonna do we're gonna just gonna pop a little bit of CA on one side of the PE fret uh, PE part rather and we're gonna line that up where it needs to go and then we're gonna let that set and then once that set we'll pop a bit of glue uh, CA glue again on the other side um, or halfway along first I believe um, push it halfway along, let that set, and then do the the other end. Um, just so you're starting to glue it at various stages down the length of the the photo etch to help it keep its shape a lot uh, a lot better. Rather than just popping a bit of glue on one side, a bit of glue on the other side, holding it on, even go and once it's set and it just pops off because there's because uh, the middle is not stuck down well enough. There we go, you can see we're just adding bits of CA glue. I did opt on this occasion to add it all the way around just because, like I said, it's not a uniform shape. Um, it's kind of it's kind of a complex, curvy shape, so I wanted it to be held on all edges um, rather than it being... Because uh, sometimes you can bend a piece around a complex curve, just glue it at the end, and you can see a nice big gap in the middle, which is sometimes really, really annoying. And it would have been a nightmare to fix with this because the gap would have been in the middle and it would have been between the pipes. And yeah, yeah, that wouldn't have been fun. So we glued it all the way along. Uh, excuse the shaky camera. I've changed my setup and I keep on headbutting my camera. Yeah, there it goes again. I'm just adding a little bit more CA. Uh, the, the good thing is with the CA is if it spills out, then um, it can be sanded off nicely, and it, it, it's kind of a natural gap filler anyway. Um, but we did have some gaps to fill because not only was there a seam between uh, the, the styrene piece we added and the actual exhaust, but there was a seam between the PE and the, the styrene piece we added. Now, between the PE and the styrene piece we added, there is actually no gap. So, um, so yeah, I uh, I really wanted to eliminate that gap. I'm making sure to hold it very, very tightly. Um, okay, next up we came in with our our rotary tool and the, the stone bit again. Um, I had filled previously with CA glue. Um, and I wanted to use this because the the PE from Tamiya, while it's nice quality, it's a little bit inaccurate. There's quite a large um, flat bit around the outside of the actual PE part. This isn't really present on the exhaust. So we used a rotary tool to get rid of this and create a nice little tiny small fillet between the exhaust and this fillet is just a curved edge essentially going around rather than a pointy edge um, but yeah then we were sanding it with the UMP thinny sticks just to tidy it up it looks um, very very rough at the moment but don't worry we do fix that later on <clears throat> we also used the rotary tool to get rid of that lip 
um, which is on the lower part of the PE as you see it now. Um, we used it to get rid of the most of the lip um, and then we used a different method to kind of blend it in with the exhaust. Um, this took me quite a while um, and I, I put a lot of effort into it um, and at the end I'm kind of happy with the result. Um, could be better but definitely definitely could be worse so I'm happy with that um, okay and then going through the various grades of uh, sanding sticks just to tidy up the ends and then using our buffer the blue side then the white side just to finish that up You can see it's nice and smooth rather than gappy. Speaking of gappy, next up we're using Milliput. Um, I didn't want to use Tamiya Thinner. Uh, uh, Tamiya Thinner. Uh, I didn't want to use Tamiya Fella. Um, just because it, it can take about three weeks to set. Um, that's an exaggeration. I want to use Milliput because you can aid the, the drying time of Milliput with... Um, with a heat gun, um, and I'm a very impatient person, unfortunately. Um, as you can see, I'm putting my hands off to the side. Uh, I'm wetting my fingers to mix this millipad because it does stick to your fingers otherwise, and it is really, really annoying. Um, but the moisture just helps it not stick to your fingers. Um, so we're going for a one to one part, one part to one part, exactly the same amount. Um, this millipad is probably past its it's used by date to be honest I've had it for over two years now and it hasn't been super sealed um, but it did the job I wanted to try and thin in it try to thin it a bit just to get it a little bit more malleable so I popped a bit of water in with it it thins pretty well with water um, you can see I popped a bit more water in and I ended up putting too much water in so then I had to leave it a bit to uh, to clump up a bit to get some of that water off um, but yeah you can thin millipad with water um, just uh, maybe not that much water and all I'm using here is a toothpick in a piece of styrene rod um, so it's got like a kind of handle and I'm just using this to apply it um, one thing I will say with these if you're doing this with a toothpick for um, thinner and stuff is coat the end in like super glue um, and let it dry because it's not going to splinter and stuff if you're poking it into areas. Um, but yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm just filling more of the gaps around the outside. Um, there was a lot of gap edge and I didn't want gap edge. I wanted it nice. Um, so we used a bit of this thin milliput um, around the edge. And what we also done is that kind of bottom corner of the exhaust, uh, of the PE plate the part which is pointing down now is not actually the bottom corner it'll be to the right when you're looking at the actual exhaust but that PE had a bit of an overhang and I didn't want to spend I didn't want to cut it all off so we filled that with milliput um, and then now uh, once we uh, were leaving that to dry um, after aiding it slightly with uh, a heat gun because I'm impatient um, after that we uh, moved on to building up the parts of the radiator which we stick together before paint um, as you can see I've cut the radiator uh, guards out of the PE um, these are guards they're not actually part of the the radiator looking at the reference photos um, so don't go sanding the radiator detail off because those those uh, PE parts are actually radiator covers um, so paint the radiator radiator as you would uh, if it was if you just had the kit part and then these get glued on afterwards um, so yeah just two sides to stick on um, we've deseamed everything um, good thing about uh, the plastic in this kit is any kind of ejector pin marks seem to be on the back side or on an area which is not visible so not much fill in to do for that um, be careful if you don't uh, be careful you don't use too much glue on these parts because the um, 
uh, the, the weld seams are molded in and they actually look pretty good so you don't want to get rid of those uh, as you can see the tip of that exhaust was grey because I done a lot of filling a lot of sanding a lot of filling a lot of sanding and priming in between just to see um, if I'd filled everything I didn't think everybody wanted to see filling and sanding and priming filling and sanding priming filling and sanding priming so I just jumped straight to proper priming so we're priming with Mr. Surfacer 1500 black um, I've unfortunately run out of my special Mr. Surface Fella 1500 Special Edition Black Boy. Um, so we use in just standard 1500 black. Uh, thinned with Mr. Rabbit Thinner, actually, uh, because it didn't have leveling thinner at the time. Um, thinned with Mr. Rabbit Thinner, uh, about 50, about 60, 40, uh, we got to eventually. 60% uh, thinner, 40% paint. Um, and then we're just going to prime all of our parts, which we uh we're doing now so the radiator and the exhausts i think there was a couple of other little bits um as well we done but mainly the radiator and the exhaust is what we are focusing on in this video uh so this 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 paint covers excellently um but we still want to build it up uh so just make sure you're getting in all the little nooks and crannies and crevices and and, and whatnot on this uh and the same with the exhaust because it's quite easy to miss a little bit and miss it the whole time and then you, you you pretty much finish your paint and then you look back and you're like oh i got a gap there next up lp1 because i've run out of gx2 unfortunately this is probably my second favorite gloss black next to gx2 um and after three coats of the primer we are using the gx2 and um, first we put on uh, we're not using the gx2 it's the lp1 it's gloss black um so all we're doing is we put it on a nice thin coat at first just to get coverage just to make sure we get we're getting everywhere we need to and we're not going to get any issues painting um just uh, paint it on till you've got like a kind of satiny feel to it um for your first coat just to make sure you're covering it second coat a little bit thicker and then for the third coat i go down pretty much glass like um thick enough that it need, leaves a nice glossy layer but not too thick that it's going to run um and everything was given this treatment the um the radiator sides and everything too um but mainly we're focusing on the, the exhaust on this isn't a very very shiny shiny metal however i wanted to uh, just do the block gloss black base first anyway just because that's what i normally do with exhausts um yeah the the kind of top end of the exhaust like um the manifold and the mid part where you'd normally find the catalytic converter if it was a, a road bike um that's quite a dull titanium gray bluey color um there's no shine to it at all when i'm looking at reference photos the the exhaust tips as well they've got a little bit of shine but they're more satin so i wouldn't go for a show-stopping glossy finish on these exhausts to be honest because titanium generally um or heated titanium or titanium when it's used on exhaust generally doesn't get super duper shiny But we went for the gloss black base anyway for so far bit um and i think this is our third coat and we're just gonna slop it on really glossy okay now it comes to painting the exhausts i used tamiya x31 i think titanium silver i used to paint the exhaust first um because like i said it doesn't need to be super duper shiny uh, and i know the titanium silver isn't the shiniest of paints so the gloss black base helped give it a little bit of sheen the metallic sheen what we're looking for but not a uh, a high gloss finish like you would with a chrome pipe so this being tamiya um acrylic paint it can be thinned <clears throat> with lacquer thinner and this was thinned again with rapid thinner as i generally do with with metallics just to get them to set nice and quick um it was thinned about again about 60 percent start at about 50 percent and then work your way up until it sprays good don't get bogged down with the details too much because it doesn't really matter as long as it goes through your airbrush that's great um 
as long as it goes through your airbrush and lays down nicely, that's all you care about. Um, that's all I care about anyway. I, I generally thin by eye. I don't. That's why my my thinning ratios I give you are about slightly, maybe kind of about this much. So yeah, just don't get bogged down with the details too much because it can really start annoying you. Okay, next up we used um, <clears throat> Tamia uh, Tamia Alclad Hot Metal Violet. Now. You're going to look at this and you're going to think, what is he doing? And after doing it, I kind of thought, what? Why am I? But anyway, my plan, <clears throat> which you will see worked a little bit, was to do the heat stain in first. This heat stain in is not from exhaust gases. This heat stain in is from the welding process. Because if you look at reference pictures, you can see there is purpley blue heat staining around the welds mostly um, <clears throat> so that's what we done we added purple and blue where the outsides of the welds would be uh, this stuff is straight uh, from from the the bottle it doesn't need to be thinned it is a super thin paint we use a 0.2 apex here and we're just <clears throat> spraying it on nice and thin um, it, it ended up a little bit too dark that was my issue, um, as you can see here. Um, at the moment, it does look super crazy, like, what in God's name is he doing? But then we came in with some thread, just literal standard cotton thread coated in a little bit of um, liquid mask. <clears throat> and we used this to mask off where the heat staining of the weld would be. Now, we didn't want to use thin... Uh, masking tape because that had too much of a nice clean edge um, so we, I, I decided to use the thread because that's not going to mask perfectly and it's going to let some of the the next paint kind of bleed slightly under um, so it gives a kind of an even edge which is what we were looking for because if it was a perfect edge it just wouldn't look realistic um, so yeah, we masked off essentially around where all the welds were and we done it on these parts and down the middle. And then we come in with LP62 Titanium Gold. Now this, um, <clears throat> this again is too shiny for this, um, for this kind of uh, metal on the exhaust. So what we done is we sprayed it on nice and thin but we made sure to cover... Um, everything so we wanted to get rid of the excess of that previous heat staining now you can tell me in the comments if i went completely around the houses to do this but i had an idea i thought i'd give it a try and i gave it a try um and i'm not too annoyed uh with the outcome i quite like the outcome and after all at the end and i enjoyed the process and that's the thing at the end of the day that's what this is about is enjoying yourself and i did so after that, we're using some uh, Alclad Hot Metal Burnt Carbon, I believe it was, or was it Sepia? One or the other, I believe it's the Burnt Carbon. It just flashed up, but I was busy talking, mumbling away. Um, again, we're just going to use this um, around these, very, very lightly around these um, the parts we've masked off, because this will be the darker area around the weld seams. Um, and we also kind of misted this over just to bring back the shininess of that um, titanium gold paint because like I said it's not glossy it's kind of a like a matte finish um, now when it came to peeling off we did have a couple of issues as you've seen there we did have some paint kind of um, chip up but not a problem um, so Next part, I decided to use oil paints. So, um, all I've done is I've got some cheapo oil paints from Hobbycraft. I've put them on uh, a piece of cardboard just to get a lot of the oil out. And then we're getting a, a kind of nice brownie colour and just again going around the outside of the weld seams. Literally, um, it's, it's unthinned at first, so <clears throat> we loaded up our first brush with the oil paint went around pretty much in a line where we needed the um, our kind of demarcation to be and then we're using another 
uh, another old brush dipped in mineral spirits uh, using sansador orderless mineral spirits wiped most of that off uh, minerals wiped most of the mineral spirits off on a tissue and then used it to pull the um, the oil down to get a nice streak um, yeah yeah I quite enjoyed that I went around uh, most of the wells using that technique and then uh, oil paints do take six million years to dry so I moved on to other stuff so <clears throat> we were using this is the Tamiya panel line accent color black and we're just using this to go around all the little areas and um, recesses and stuff on the uh, on the radiator this will give uh, this will give the radiator some depth um, and it's a thing which I see some people miss out uh sometimes um and while it's that's fine that's fine i just i just believe it looks a little bit better with a wash if it if if i can wash it i'll wash it um okay and there's our finished exhausts um <clears throat> now while i'm putting stuff together i want to talk through the last thing that i done with the exhausts um so um, I masked off the, the manifold parts and painted them in metallic grey because they need to be a darker colour. Um, I also used the Tamiya panel line wash uh, as I did on this. Um, <clears throat> now, what I uh, what I also done is I used the AK True Metal kind of waxy tube paint gold to go over the actual weld um on on the exhaust pipe because that is a little bit shinier um and then i went back in with oil paints over the top to bring that shininess down in certain areas and add lines um so it looked like an actual weld like i said i'm not um i'm not annoyed with the finish i i'm quite happy with the work that i done on the exhaust and i'll add a couple of pictures at the end just so you can see um but yeah, yeah, the exhausts are generally my favourite part of these bike builds, and I, I did enjoy these pipes, and they are, they look like my favourite exhaust pipes. Um, yeah, they they're excellent looking. I don't mean the finish; I mean the design of the exhaust pipes. I'm not tooting my own horn, blow my own trumpet. Um, I just mean the engineering behind those pipes. They just look spectacular okay so this side piece again was painted um, mainly in um, ta uh, alclad aluminium which is what we painted the um, the radiator in um, <clears throat> but we did mask off the end and paint that metallic grey to match the water pump on the side of the engine um, just because it is a nice kind of dark metal colour. When it comes to parts like this, when you've got kind of half the bike built up or half the model built up and you're adding bits on using CA glue, be extremely careful. It is very, very easy to get, um, get some glue on your fingers, not notice touch another part of the model and uh, get a big glue stain or pull some paint off or wreck a decal so just be very just I, I would suggest being very very careful um, because I have once or twice made that mistake um, it's also very easy to knock parts off um, so I can't, in the next video I believe you will see that uh, that piece of aero under the um, under the swing arm comes off about three or four times uh, <laughs> um, so yeah just uh, just pay attention um, and don't rush things um, like I often do um, yeah I mean I often rush things not pay attention I'm like a squirrel if something shiny happens over there I'm <laughs> like a squirrel like a magpie rather squirrels 
don't like shiny. Does Squirtle like shiny stuff? I don't know. Anyway, see, this this just proves my point. I'm rambling on, talking about nonsense, while you're trying to watch me put a bike together. Um, yeah, so I'm like a magpie. Um, and a squirrel, apparently. Um, just be very careful where you're putting your glue and where you're putting your fingers. Um, I could be taken a few ways. But, uh, but yeah, just, just take your time. Just calm down. I'm talking to myself now. Um, but yeah, um, I don't think you want to see me sticking things on over and over, talking absolute twaddle. So we'll, uh, we'll jump ahead and uh, show some pictures of where we got to. Okay, and then we have our finished pipes. Um, you see, we, um, we used some oil paints. The oil paints turned out well. Uh, the blue bits you see were just light dusting of uh, hot metal blue by Alclad just to give the colour of the clamps. Um, there you can see that green I mentioned in the last video on the um, chain. Not great, however, not bad. Added a little bit of soot to the end, uh, and there you can see the AK steels that I used a little bit of steel uh, AK paints that I used a little bit of as a nice side shot and uh, there you can see better the uh, the oils so yeah that was part four um, so yeah we done and dusted with part four part five is edited just needs to be voiceover so I think what I'm gonna do is after this I'm gonna voice over part five um, just to get it ready um, and in the next couple of days then I can I can put it out um, but yeah yeah, I uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that, and um, this has been a really, really fun build from the beginning, uh, right up to here and to the end, because it, it is now complete. Um, but yeah, if you're enjoying as much as me, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, let me know down in the comments what you thought about that uh, around the houses way to do the exhaust. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, and stay safe.